Ink Ribbon. I know this video has been long overdue, but I was waiting for the DLC for Village to drop so I could make a video that fully encompassed the game and all it had to offer. Resident Evil Village was one of the biggest departures from the origins of the zombie survival we know, cementing the series as not just a franchise, but an entire anthology and also closing the chapter on the Winter's Family Saga. So today, let's look at what I was able to dig up for you. Here is my list of the top 10 secrets, lore, and easter eggs from Resident Evil Village. Number 10 Lessons from 7 Resident Evil Village was developed as a direct sequel to the seventh game and was intended to both reconnect the franchise to its roots as well as improve upon what was already implemented. The opening of the game taking place in a warm home setting was a direct result of several surveys done with players who did not like Seven. While the more sensitive players said the atmosphere was too eerie and dingy, other players said they were desensitized to the amount of scares, which led to Village having a complete rebalancing of the pacing of both the scares and the atmosphere. The reason Capcom heavily encouraged the game to be called Village instead of 8 was also a result of feedback from 7, where many players felt that jumping into the 7th entry of a game wouldn't be approachable for new players to the series, which is likely going to mean that all Resident Evil titles moving forward will have some type of subtitle instead of a number. And lastly, going back to the roots of the series was the reintroduction of amazing environments. While there are plenty of scary and decrepit places throughout, there are also many beautiful places to explore, such as the interior of Castle Dimitrescu. Number 9 Inspiration I put a whole section just for inspiration because while researching, I just kept finding that almost everything in this game takes heavy inspiration from so many sources. There are plenty throughout this video, but here's a few that don't really have a place anywhere else. First and foremost, almost everything in the game is heavily inspired by classic gothic literature, paying homage to lots of famous works, but again, I'll elaborate more on that later. Mother Miranda's lab almost looks identical to David's lab in the 2017 movie Alien Covenant. Allegedly, the famous fetus section of the game was inspired by the cancelled Silent Hills PT game that also featured a fetus. The collectible black goats were inspired by the 2015 film The Witch. And most infamously, the one that so many of you messaged me about, in Heisenberg's lair, the boss with the propeller and the flamethrower, called the Sturm, was inspired by the monster from the 2013 film Frankenstein's Army. Number 8 The Winter's Family after the events of Seven, Ethan and Mia went into witness protection, guarded primarily by the BSAA, including Chris Redfield. Along with this, both of them had to undergo multiple surgeries to remove clumps of mold growing in their bodies. The BSAA also interrogated Mia and Ethan separately, finding out that Mia could be used as a mole and it was kept secret from Ethan that she was working as some sort of double agent. In August of 2020, about two years into the witness protection, Mia gave birth to Rosemary. After a data leak, Mia was abducted and Miranda shapeshifted into her, living as Mia for weeks in order to get close to Rose and take her. A few of the tip-offs that Ethan notices, but doesn't comment on, is her sudden interest in local cuisine, which you can see at the beginning of the game. Mmm, that smells good. What's that? Oh, hands off, mister. It's chorba de la gum. It's a local recipe. The other is Mia reading a fairy tale book to Rose, which Ethan says is too scary for a baby. I also wanted to take a look at the flasks, and I was a bit relieved when I found out the flasks don't actually contain dismembered baby parts, but instead, crystallized remains of Rose. This is explained in the file Eugen's Diary, detailing how Mother Miranda whispered something to Rose, causing her to turn to a crystal, smashed her into pieces, and then gave the pieces to the four lords in the flasks. Mia was originally going to be confined to a wheelchair, as seen in concept art, but this was dropped in favor of her taking medication instead. Throughout the game, Ethan is constantly getting injuries, specifically his hands, but is able to regenerate just like in Seven. This is because Ethan is infected by the mold, just like the enemies he faces, which allows him to heal throughout the game. 
Now moving on to Rose, I decided to check out her backstory as well and see what happened to her after the events of Village. As she grew up, she continued to be in the protective custody of the BSAA, but was able to go to school normally, thanks to the threat of Mother Miranda being eliminated. Mia slowly became more distant from Rosemary until she was no longer involved in her life at all, essentially leaving Rose with no family. Because she was born from two mold-infected parents, she not only has the mold, but also has the ability to control it. Her mutations also weren't a secret. The BSAA explained to her teachers that while Rose does have abilities, she was also able to control them and wasn't dangerous. Unfortunately, this information didn't stay secret for long and her classmates found out quickly. They were also not very kind to her. The main reason kids bullied Rose was because of a side effect of her abilities, where she secretes a milky white substance when she's nervous, similar to sweat. By the time she was 16, Chris and the government were now interested in recruiting her, hoping that she could use her abilities to help them. Number 7 Castle Dimitrescu Before we talk about the castle, we have to talk about the woman of the hour, Lady Dimitrescu. I won't talk too much on her since I already did an entire video of facts just for her, but I do want to mention that she has two major inspirations for her design, which unlike the other characters, isn't derived from gothic literature, instead being inspired mainly by the Hachishaku-sama, a Japanese spirit that preys on children and is over 8 feet tall, and her metal claws being inspired by the character Lust from Full Metal Alchemist. The first names of Lady D and the sisters all follow the first four letters of the alphabet, Alcina, Bella, Cassandra, and Daniela. A, B, C, D. Moving on to the castle itself, it's actually based on a real castle in Romania called Pele's Castle. A Reddit user with the fitting name of Smooth Skin Operator shared these photos to show a side-by-side -side comparison of what the real castle looked like. Number 6 Moreau. Moving on, we take a look at the grotesque but strangely lovable Dr. Moreau. Every other lord infected by the Kado more or less retained a human appearance, but in Moreau's case, he transformed into a fish monster with a hunchback, a deformed face, as well as causing him to secrete a thick, slimy substance, which you will find all over his lair. He also has two tattoos on each arm, with one saying mother and the other being an anchor which could imply that he was a sailor at one point or another. Moreau is one of the best examples of a character inspired by gothic horror literature, specifically H.G. Wells' Island of Dr. Moreau. His section was also inspired by Lovecraftian horror, utilizing several tropes from it such as the fish hybrid transformation, tentacles, and many, many eyeballs. His human form, on the other hand, was inspired by the kappa, a common Japanese folklore creature. It's also worth mentioning that Moreau's crown is made out of villagers' bones. In early concept art, he is depicted to be watching romance movies and eating cheese before meeting Ethan. And once in his lair, you can find the bowl of cheese near the area he was in. Number 5 Beneviento The Beneviento house was a standout location and experience in Village. Instead of a singular boss, it was instead a duo consisting of Donna, the human, and Angie, the doll. I couldn't confirm this, but it's heavily suggested that the Beneviento dolls are a callback to the Resident Evil 4 beta shown at E3, where mysterious dolls would come to life and chase after Leon. The doll puzzle is especially twisted, being almost tailor-made for Ethan, with a large wooden doll that resembles Mia, and even has a bandaged wound in the same place that Ethan hit her with an axe in Seven. A once prominent family, the Benevientos began to fall apart when Donna's parents both committed suicide when she was just a child, causing her to withdraw and spend many years in isolation, leading to her talking to people only through dolls, specifically one her father made for her. There is a bit of discrepancy in the English and Japanese version though, with the English version implying that her anxieties and mental issues stem more from her facial disfigurement. Because most of her communication is through the doll, Donna only has one line of dialogue in the entire game. 
Don't leave. I can't let you. Once she was implanted with the Kado, she gained the ability to secrete a chemical that could cause extreme and violent hallucinations in people. I noticed that when approaching the house, just before Ethan starts to see Mia and other hallucinations, there is suddenly a fog, which may be what is secreted. And this most likely means that the giant fetus monster was actually just a severe hallucination and never actually existed, but that's just my speculation. It felt pretty real to me. Number 4 Heisenberg the second place fan favorite villain of this game, also, unsurprisingly, takes a page out of the classics. His design was inspired by three different figures in classic horror, Dr. Victor Frankenstein, the monster, and Dr. Werner Karl Heisenberg. Dr. Frankenstein is known for reconstructing and reanimating creatures, specifically with electricity, as demonstrated by Heisenberg's modifications to the soldiers he's building. The monster, who is left in a world where he is hated and turns against his creator, the same way Heisenberg resents and turns against Mother Miranda. And Dr. Werner Karl Heisenberg was a German physicist who specialized in ferromagnetism, which is the principle of certain metals being able to react to magnets, which was also the main inspiration for Heisenberg's abilities. The factory and many of its assets, as well as Heisenberg himself, all seem to have strong themes of World War II, with everything from old German vehicles down to the dog tag around his neck. Heisenberg's hammer seems to be built from the transmission of a truck, a heavy-duty one at that, and in the newly added DLC, he is able to charge up his hammer to deliver a massive charge blow to all the enemies around him, as well as using scrap metal and saw blades as projectiles. And he also laughs when he kills Mother Miranda in the Mercenaries DLC. Number 3 Easter Eggs I've already listed a lot of nods, references, and inspirations, but this is where we take a look at some good old-fashioned Easter Eggs that didn't really fit anywhere else. First, the red wine that Mia pours at the beginning of the game is called Regina Rose, which translates to Red Queen in Romanian. You can find several architecture books at the beginning, which are directly related to the Spencer Mansion. As a nod to the original, Chris is once again depicted as a smoker, which was infamously censored from some releases of the original Resident Evil. Most of you probably picked up on this, but in case you missed the document in Miranda's lab, Oswell Spencer was mentored by Miranda, and together they found what is now the Umbrella logo in a cave, which not only led to the start of the company, but also T-Virus research and the franchise as a whole. The Duke references the Merchant from Resident Evil 4, implying that they were friends at one point. What are you buying? <laughs> Just something an old friend of mine used to say. The main menu will change based on the state of the game. Various things like time of day and state of decay will play a factor. This one is up for debate, but when you leave the Beneviento house and get all your items back, a new hidden message appears on the back of the family photo, which a lot of people believe was written by Donna. However, some players notice this photo is dirty before and seems to have been cleaned, implying the message was always there, just not visible. And lastly, Heisenberg makes a reference to the infamous scene in Resident Evil 5 where he calls Chris a boulder-punching asshole. No! Oh, why am I lying? That boulder-punching asshole! But you're first! Number 2 Unused Content Now moving to things that never made it into the game, I was able to find some stuff of interest that I haven't already mentioned thus far. First up is the Dimitrescu Dozen. Originally, there was 12 sisters patrolling the castle, but with trial and error, they determined that it messed up the flow of the action, so it was cut down to three, with Alcina being the leader who was originally envisioned as a, quote, bewitching vampire with giant garden shears. Then there's Osman Sadler too. Okay, so not literally Sadler, but an unnamed priest was going to be the main antagonist before Mother Miranda was added into the game. One of the unused enemies were the Lycan Handlers, giant Lycan men who controlled two large werewolves on leashes. A few gameplay components were changed as well, to more closely follow the formula laid out by Resident Evil 4. While typewriters were retained, item boxes were ultimately removed. 
Also stemming from Four's inspiration was the removal of Ethan having a backpack, which instead was replaced by the attaché case. Saving was originally going to be done with a camera, but typewriters ultimately won out, especially considering how well they fit the game's aesthetic. Number 1 Original Story If you're a Resident Evil fan, then you are most likely aware that Ada Wong was going to be in the game, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. The original story concept was very different from the final game in a lot of ways. First and foremost was Mia having a reduced role. She was going to spend the game in a wheelchair, recovering from the events of Resident Evil 7, and her story would focus on her doing everything she can to move on with her life and overcome her trauma. Going back to Ada Wong, she was going to appear as a mysterious masked character who is constantly saving Ethan. While it's never explained why she was cut, Considering Chris, Miranda, Blue Umbrella, the BSAA, and Ethan were all after the same thing, it's most likely just that there were way too many characters for one storyline. And speaking of too many characters, as mentioned previously with the 12 sisters being reduced, the factory portion of the game was heavily changed as far as characters go. Heisenberg was originally going to be a set of twin brothers, and his mother was a test subject for some type of brain experiment, while his father was going to be the gas mask wearing leader of the village and would also have been the boss of that area. The duke was actually going to be the fifth lord and Beneviento was not going to be a woman and a puppet but instead envisioned as a quote ghost family of scary pale children figures accompanying their sick looking parents with no faces. The fetus monster may have been left over from all of that but I'm not sure. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that trip back to the village, and I'd love to hear what you thought of all this info, especially the last thing I just said about the story being so different for the Beneviento house, because, I don't know, to me that sounds really cool, but I'd like to know what you guys think. I know it took a long time to make this video, but I was waiting for the DLC to drop, so I was sure to not miss anything that could be mentioned. If you like this video, then please sell that like button to the Duke for a nice profit, and be sure to check out my other secrets and easter eggs videos just like this one. I hope you're all having a great day, and remember to drink water. I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.